Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics, reaching you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. Here's what's coming up on the program right now. An aftermath deliberation with a voice vote verdict, Senator Domingue is suspended for three months from legislative proceedings, alleging that his colleagues filed the 2024 budget to the tune of three trillion naira. legislative day of the week. This unusual situation... Lawmakers in the Green Chambers ask the National Security Advisor to fully implement all elements of the Anti-Terrorism Act to stem the notorious spate of kidnappings in the country. The President of the Senate, Senator Gosman Fabio. Barely less than a week after kidnapping over 200 children in Kaduna, bandits again struck in Kajuru local government area in a fresh attack abducting over 60 persons. Welcome again to the program. It's almost 24 hours into a three-month suspension of Senator Abdul Ningi by the Senate for alleging the lawmakers part of the 2024 budget, or as he says, can't explain a three trillion naira component in the Appropriation Act. His claim based on the BBC House High interview was interpreted by one of the senators, Jimmy Ibrahim, as a criminal inf misinformation and a breach of peace. And it did not sit well with the Ray Chamber, who for hours engaged in a rousing session. At the end of arguments and submissions, the Senate moved a motion to suspend Senator Ningi for three months from its proceedings and its premises. My privilege has been breached. Also, because I am one of those that participated in the passage of the 2024 appropriation bill. Because preparation of budgets it's not only the sole responsibility of the Senate. It includes the Federal House of Reps and even the executive. But as chairman chairing the Senate Committee on Appropriation, who actively participated in the preparation of this document, and for what has transpired within the last three days, my privilege has been breached. It was said that there was a budget of 28 trillion, but what was passed was 25 trillion. So, there is a three trillion on top. Where are they? Where is it going? So, we need to know this. There are agencies of the government whose budgets and their details are not contained in this document. Agencies such as the judiciary. The judiciary budget details is not contained in this document. The National Assembly budget details is not contained in this document. The INEC budget details is not contained in this document. Let me concur that about 80% of the translation read out by Senator Yai. I think they have done a fair job, except on some issues that they could not understand. First, I have never said somebody was blinded. Secondly, I have never said the budget was added. Mr. President, as I speak to you, I do not know your check on pay. You know my own. It is not about Ningi now only. If we are talking about Ningi in this room, but it is about all of us outside. This thing has happened. It has happened. And Ningi was wrong. I told Ningi in here that he made a mistake, that he stand up and apologize to us first, then apologize that, look, this even figure that I'm looking for, three trillion, is here. I'm sorry for the embarrassment I've called. That is what I'm suggesting. What distinguished senator Abdul Ningi, who I respect so well, plan to do or set out to do 
was tantamount to a civilian coup, which has failed. And in doing this, he wanted to use the platform of Northern Senators Forum. I am a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am not a senator of the North, nor am I a senator of the South. I am a Nigeria senator. These rules we agreed on in the first two, three cities that we will operate irrespective of accident or bad place and even the factor of religion or any of those primordial sentiments. My first prayer is that the Senate should suspend Senator Abu Dinigi uh, for, for an initial period of 12 months, suspend his entitlement and privileges as Senator of the 10th Assembly or 10th Senate and uh, make him stay away from the National Assembly during the period of suspension. Senator Abdul Ningi of Baji Central, having posted falsehood through his interview on BBC Asa Service and other media, B, and is hereby suspended from all activities of the Senate, including being found within the prisons of the Senate for the next three months. Two, the civil senator, Abdurrahman Ismaila Kawu, is also hereby cautioned from posting or reposting unverified or falsehood on his Facebook or Northern Senators Forum to avoid a breakdown of law and order. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Yes. Well, a lot happened yesterday. In the meantime, Sheon Nigbinde, who is a co-founder of Budget, a private organization dedicated to analyzing and simplifying all of these budget issues, claims the members of the National Assembly indiscriminately inserted constituency projects to gain large allocations for their benefit. Mr. Nguyenne, while speaking in our program Politics Today, faults the presidency for not properly scrutinizing the budget, saying the issue originated from the Ninth Assembly. Somebody was indiscriminately getting an allocation for an amount. Some people got 500 million. We've done the analysis. Some senators that had projects around 13 to 11 billion in their constituency. And it looks like it was a free for all. And when this, before this budget was passed, we said the president needs to have a grip of the budget. This is the same thing Muhammad Buhari's government did. And why he spent so much, he borrowed so much, and he achieved too little. This did not start with the National Assembly. This started with the Ninth National Assembly. And this whole arbitrarily indiscriminate insertion of projects by the National Assembly, where, you know, because we, I agree to some extent, that appropriation powers belong to the National Assembly, but powers must be used in a responsible manner. That is what I believe. Um, the National Assembly has gotten to a point that it now, after the budget has been presented by the executive, it carves out an amount for itself. It allocates those amounts to each of the senators. Let's not forget, previously, there was a constituency fund for projects, and that was 100 billion naira. And everybody agreed that if that is the sacrifice you are going to make to make to allow the budget to, to be passed, if that's what you're going to use to oil the wheels of budget passing, let us have that. And if you're going to raise that to 200 billion or 250 billion, considering that the budget is now have gotten bigger compared to previous years, that's fine. But for you to now go and add over 7,000 projects to the budget at over 2.2 trillion naira. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, that is the focus of our conversation. This budget's pardon allegation that led to the suspension of Senator Abdul Ningi uh, is, is the focus of the conversation for today. But we can tell you quickly that the Senate at the moment is having a closed-off session with the FCT Minister and yes, on weekend, the Commissioner of Police. Uh, after the incident that has occurred in the federal capital territory in terms of insecurity in that area. So we're also following up on that development in the Red Chamber to find out exactly what is the outcome 
of that closed door session. But let's get back to the conversation. We've been joined by the president of public policy think tank, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Abubakar Alkali, who joins us from Abuja studio. Dr. Alkali, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Dr. Akali, we've seen suspensions. Uh, we could remember names like uh, Athon Zeribe, Joseph Waku from Benue, uh, immediate past, even Alin Dume himself, including uh, Ovia uh, uh when, he, when he was in the Senate before he became Deputy Senate President. The latest is Abdul Ningi. Now, some people have interpreted this to be many things. Some say this is politics to distract people from what is going on in the country. Others call it uh, institutional self-protection. Um, others are saying, oh, it's a whistleblower that is about, it's being shut down. All kinds of interpretation. What do you make of what's going on with this whole National Assembly budget pardon allegation that led to the suspension? Hello. Can you, can you hear me, uh, doctor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there, there, there was a break, actually. Um, there was a break. Okay, so I was, I was asking that. You I reeled out some of that. the, I was real, I reeled out some of the people that have been suspended all the way from 1999 till now. Some of them, and I'm just saying that there, are, there are different interpretations to what happened yesterday, uh, ranging from people saying this is politics to distract us from the big issues. Others are calling it self. Uh, institutional self-protection to protect themselves. Others are saying this is hushing a, what do they call it, a, 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 a whistleblower not to, you know, break the box. There are so many interpretations. What do you make of it? Yeah, uh, thank you again. I think um, I will go with uh, the um, aspect of uh, distraction. I think um, this is more of uh, a distraction from the main issue. Um, I think, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, this is not the uh, first time we're having this kind of problems, as you rightly, uh, um, you know, uh, enumerated. Um, the Senate uh, has been embroiled in this kind of uh, allegations uh, over um, so many years. Um, for one, this is not what I really, as a person, you know, as a Nigerian, this is not what I expected. The suspension is not what I expected, um, at least in the first instance. What I think um, I will say I expected, and what uh, many Nigerians, uh, presumably majority of Nigerians will expect, is uh, a total investigation, okay, in the, into this allegation. Um, because these are too weighty, these allegations are too weighty uh, to just be made, um, you know, uh, like that. The senator made his allegations and uh, he actually said he stood by them. He said consultants actually, um, you know, investigated the budget and this is their findings. There was uh, an excess 3.7 trillion that was added into it. Into it. So what we expected as Nigerians, um, uh, majority of us, um, uh, for me, uh, what I expected was a thorough investigation by the Senate. But uh, that uh, doesn't usually um, happen. But that said, I think also that the issue of uh, budget padding has, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not new. Um, what Senator Ningi is saying is actually not new. Uh, it's been they are almost every other year. Uh, you find out that there is a kind of uh, rat race or competition to get projects, okay? To get uh, uh, constituency projects inserted into the budget. Every senator, every uh, uh, lawmaker, every leg legislator, um, you know, tries to get as many uh, projects as possible. And if we should go by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, honestly, I've not seen where the constitution, 1999, as amended, captures, captures constituency projects. Because this is the whole uh, backbone of this controversy. This is the backbone of this uh, pardon controversy. 
constituency projects. Every, everybody, every senator, every House member, every federal legislator wants constituency projects. So um, the constitution is clear in uh, part two, section four, that the um, work of the National Assembly, the legislature, is to make laws. It is very clear. The legislature, uh, the, the, the legislature makes laws, the executive implements, and the judiciary, uh, you know, interprets. So I, do, I, I can't really locate where consistency projects come into this, because that is the, the crux of the matter. As long as there are consistency projects, okay, which I think are outside the constitution, as long as they are there, and senators, you know, continue to compete for who gets the lion's share, then there will be this problem. There will be this budget padding problem. Because you find out that uh, there is a lot of intense lobbying, right. lobbying over the whole financial year. Intense lobbying for um, consistency projects. And those that were not able to get their projects in, before the 25, before the uh, 28.7 trillion was uh, inserted, may now come back even after the budget has been ascended to by the uh, uh, president, has been ascended to by the president. Those who were not able to get their projects inserted will now find ways. Okay, they will now find ways to come back and get uh, these uh, projects uh, inserted, which now results to um, uh, uh, what you, what, what, to, to an excess. Okay. That's the controversy. So as oh, long as okay, we doctor. have uh, constituency projects, okay, constituency projects um, controversy for so long, we will continue to have budget padding. Okay, doctor. Uh, so the issue is with the constituency projects. Okay, there, there are a couple of questions uh, on my mind. Now, one of, do you think that uh, Senator Abdul Ningi did a bit of justice So all of us? By, because some people are saying, if he had this claim, he should have at least broken it down to details, just like I think we saw Abdul Mumuni did uh, with, the, uh, with the House of Representatives while he was in the House and even went all the way to the EFCC and all of that. So people were feeling that he should have broken it down to posit exactly where these paddings happen because he was explaining that line by line you could account for 25 billion trillion but three trillion uh, there is no clarity and some have come to counter and said statutory transfers don't have all of those breakdowns do you think abdul ningi should have done better in his um in, in his in his uh, in his quest to to bring this expose yeah i think um what he was actually um trying to do what was uh First of all, you know, um, give a kind of uh, um, starter on BBC House of Service. He was trying to give a, a starter to say this is the, the sum of uh, the, the money involved. This is the total of the money involved. That was uh, at 3.7 trillion. And I think Dr. the game plan was... Dr. Akali, if I may, if I may might, butt in for a moment. Going to the details. My, my apologies, Dr. Akali. Uh, uh, just if I may butt in, I'll get back to you on this, but quickly I want to say that uh, we will be going live to Anambra State in Onitsha for the inauguration of the commissioning of, or the inauguration of Port Harcourt and Niger Street. But it's going, only going to be on our DSTV platform right now. Uh, we, you, but you can continue to watch Lunchtime Politics on our terrestrial platform as well as online where we're streaming live. Dr. Akali, my apologies for uh, cutting your thought. Please, you can continue. No problem. Yeah. So I think uh, the game plan of the single senator Ningi was to, first of all, uh, give a starter to say this is the, the, um, the money involved, this is the total sum, and then let her go into the breakdown. But as it were, his colleagues, uh, distinguished senators, didn't give him that chance. Okay, and that was what I was talking about. I know when I said uh, investigation, there, there should have been a thorough investigation, you know, of the issue before even the suspension. Okay, so he was not given the chance. Now, as we saw in 2016, during the 
uh, Abdulmunu Aminu, uh, Abdulmunu Jibrin, rather, Abdulmunu Jibrin um, uh, issue uh, in the House of Reps. Uh, Abdulmunu was uh, suspended, but after his, suspen uh, after his suspension, uh, he continued giving the details. He continued giving the details. He actually even went as far as uh, giving details of what each, the, the, the principal officers of the house, what each of them got. So um, you might see something like that from distinguished uh, Senator Ningi. It's possible that going forward, he might decide to come out and do a, uh, a more justice to the issue. He might decide to come out to say, okay, these are the details, uh, 3.7, um, these are the details, uh, and this is what I mean, this, uh, this is what, uh, uh, what my consultants were, were able to uh, investigate and come out with. So there uh, might be that, uh, that uh, possibility that he might uh, break down this 3.7 um, you know, uh, into bits and pieces going forward. But I think the Senate uh, may or may not allow him to do that because in most cases you find out that this kind of issue, right. there is a way it is resolved in-house. Yeah. All right, Dr. Akali, uh, my apologies. Uh, the shortness of time is what we're trying to manage. Uh, but I, I did say that we're going to talk about two issues. Uh, so let's jump right from this National Assembly to the issue of this 287 students and children still in captivity, another 200 plus women in captivity in faraway Borono, uh, the other ones in Kaduna State. Uh, we have huge budget every year for security and defense, yet we have increasing insecurity. What are we missing? Yeah, well, uh, we are missing, um, you know, quite a few things. Um, the budget you talked about is on, um, you know, uh, difference budget, okay, but I tell you that um, uh, we, we have to um, commend, you know, the, the security agencies, uh, the military for uh, the work they are doing, and uh, I would say that if not for what they are doing, uh, to be honest, the situation would have been worse. However, what we are missing is a complement to our security agents. You see, we have the force, we have the uh, military, but then you also have other components of this, of this, uh, uh, of the solution to the problem. You have, you have the technology, you have ICT, uh, you also have uh, justice reforms, okay? Um, the work that our security agents are doing I feel should be backed by technology. Um, in this era, I think um, a face-to-face -face, uh, confrontation uh, is better, um, I mean, results are better achieved if you have the use of technology. In this era, um, I think it's only in Nigeria that, um, I tend to be corrected, but it's only in this country that it can happen when uh, a terrorist kidnaps people and picks a mobile phone, okay, picks a mo mobile phone and calls for weeks, for months on end, and he's not tracked, he's not apprehended, he's not digitally mobilized, demobilized, you see? So that is why um, this, is, uh, this should be an interagency collaboration. The military needs collaboration from the communications uh, uh, authorities, from the mm. federal Minister of Communications. Okay. We should have uh, a system that will digitally demobilize uh, phone calls. We should have satellites. We should have drones, okay, that will complement the efforts of the military. And the other thing is on justice. You see, um, as we speak, I do not know of any terrorist or bandit that was convicted by the conventional right. justice system. I All do right. not know. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah. Just land on your thoughts in 10 seconds, if you can, no, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, that is what, that um, for us to get to the root of this uh, insecurity, um, technology must be prioritized, and then justice reforms as well. Uh, bandits, um, you know, uh, terrorists, should be 
arraigned before courts of competent jurisdiction and sentence. Well, obviously, if Nigeria, uh, you know, uh, you know, institutes the capital punishment, okay. if capital punishment is instituted, right. uh, Nigeria will not be the first country to um, to do that. Dr. Abubakar Alkali is the president of Pol Public Policy Think Tank Nigeria. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, for your perspective on this issue, we always call on you to uh, bring insight to this uh, conversation. Thank you for coming on the program. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Thanks a lot. Now to a few more stories. Uh, the House of Representatives is expressing concern that following the suspension of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, implementation of the Social Investment Program has been halted. Lawmakers are now worried that halting the program at a time of increasing hunger and inflation is not good for the country. The House is further disturbed that the recommendation that the program be managed by the Minister of Finance or Ministry of Finance and Finance Minister is an anomaly and has resolved to urge the federal government to expedite investigation of the suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. Meanwhile, the House wants the President to direct the Minister of State to implement the social investment program in, in the interim and place on hold the idea of steering committee under the supervision of the Minister of Finance as it contravenes the act establishing the social investment program. And still talking about uh, issues around the House of Reps, lawmakers in the Green Chambers passed a resolution asking the National Security Advisor to fully enforce the National Counter-Terrorism Act, including the National Center for Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons. The motion follows the recent kidnapping of over 200 children in Kuriga community in Kaduna State. Despite the huge defense budgetary allocation, the House frowns on the reactionary tendency in the management of the nation's security, but it also asks the federal government to remove military from the envelope system. Now, before a visit by the Inspector General of Police uh, on this development in Kaduna State over the attack that was launched and kidnapped of the children, Bandit launched another fresh attack and took hostage about 61 persons from Buba village in Kajuru, local government area of the state. An early morning incident, as it is reported, while the villagers were still asleep. Uh, the councillor representing the world told Channels Television that the bandits invaded the village in large numbers and moved from house to house to kidnap residents while shooting sporadically. According to the councillor, the intervention of the military prevented the criminals from abducting more persons as some residents who sustained injuries uh, were so some residents sustained injury while trying to escape from the entire attack. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time and company. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. You've been served on lunchtime.